Her products help people find balance and their flow throughout their day. By flow, we mean that time when you have a really good morning and you feel super productive and focused. Oh, is that coffee? Kind of looks like hot chocolate. Quite fancy a hot chocolate. But the two best friends are keeping an open mind on who they would like as an investor today. What we're after is trying to see which dragon is the most passionate about our business and what their vision is and if it aligns with ours. Hello, dragons. I'm Shez, this is Zane. We've launched London Nootropics, the brand bringing premium, natural nootropics and adaptogens to health conscious individuals and businesses. We launched in March 2020. We quickly adopted a direct-to-consumer marketing model and drove over £60,000 in revenue in our first 12 months. We're looking for an investment of £50,000 in exchange for 10% equity in our adaptogenic wellness company. Let's have a show of hands. Who's had a coffee today? Fantastic. We're in the right room. We develop three adaptogenic coffee blends that give you all the benefits of regular coffee whilst minimising jitters, anxiety and a crash. Nootropics help with cognitive function and adaptogens help you balance physical and mental stresses in your body. We have Grind to help with mental clarity and focus, Zen to help alleviate stress and anxiety, and Mojo to give you a natural boost. Mojo has Cordyceps Mushroom, which is known to increase aerobic capacity and oxygen flow around the body. We help you easily incorporate premium adaptogens deliciously into your daily diet. We'd love for you to try our adaptogenic coffee. You have one of our starter boxes, which is what our first-time customers buy. Thank you. Coffee blends enhanced with natural substances is the product Zane Peer and Shez Shake are hoping will put the dragons in the mood for investment. The lilac one is Zen, and the green one is Mojo. They're seeking £50,000 for a 10% share of their business, and they're not afraid to add some schmooze in with their brews. Dear Peter, you're our favourite dragon. That's so kind. Hi, Stephen, you are our favourite dragon. We hope you invest. <laughs> Dear Deborah, you're our favourite dragon. <laughs> <laughs> With the charm offensive hitting the spot, it's over to one of their many favourite dragons, Deborah Meaden, to start the flow of questions. Guys, can I ask you, does everybody know what adaptogenic coffee is? It's a new term that we're kind of championing, so other brands would call it a mushroom coffee or a CBD coffee. Is it a magic mushroom? <laughs> they're, um, um, they're medicinal <laughs> mushrooms, so they don't have psychedelic effects. You're not going to start hallucinating. You know? OK, but the other one, the CBD, that's a form of cannabis, isn't it? It's derived from the, the cannabis plant, hemp plant. It's non-psychoactive, and it helps us with all sorts of things. So anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, it helps us feel relaxed. OK, so there's one thing, having a set of ingredients, how do you know that these are effective as opposed to a marketing tool? Um, we use a water-soluble, broad-spectrum CBD powder as opposed to an oil. So if you have a CBD oil, if you ingest it, you're not going to absorb much of it. And the broad-spectrum means it has other cannabinoids, and that means it has something called the entourage effect. Um, so basically, these guys help each other out to achieve those benefits for you. OK, I quite liked hearing that because mm. Markets are full of these pills that you swallow and they have no effect whatsoever. And the delivery method is really important. I was quite pleased to hear that you differentiated that. An impressive start, as the coffee entrepreneurs assuage Deborah Meaden's doubts over the efficacy of their product's properties. And it appears Sara Davies can visualise incorporating the duo's drinks into her health and fitness regime. So I just want to start out by saying I'm not really a big coffee drinker, but I do like the idea of trying one of them Mojo ones before I go running. Maybe a subscription in there for you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what I want to understand is you said it was premium. How premium? The retail price is £15 for a standard box of 12, so that's £1.25 per serving. So what would an espresso pod cost me? Uh, a third of the price. Right. We don't like to compare ourselves directly to just regular coffee because we're not regular I, coffee. I understand that. 
But to go mass market, to make a huge success of this, you're going to have to hit the regular coffee market who are going to compare it mm -hmm. with the price of, of buying a regular coffee. And that's the worry there. Zane, Shez, um, you said you'd done 60K revenue since March this year. Yeah, yeah. So in total, since we've launched, we've yeah. done £120,000 in revenue, £56,000 gross, and minus £30,000 net. In cash in the bank, we have 25,000, and we also have 25,000 pounds in stock. Your sales seem pretty low. I was expecting higher levels of sales. In terms of what we've done to bring in the sales so far, we've spent 37,000 pounds on marketing to drive over 100,000 pounds in our online revenue through our store. OK, so why haven't you invested the 25,000 pounds that you've got in marketing to get rid of the stock you have. We just got that stock in a few weeks ago and that is literally what we're, we're, we're about to do. No, I know, but why didn't you do that three weeks ago? Well, I don't have an answer why it's not three weeks ago and why it's next week. No, but um, that is a good, good question, isn't it? Sure. Yeah, it's a good question. We've tried to be perfectionists with everything because it's been our baby and we're like, listen, we need to get this exactly spot on. No, it's just the time that you've taken to do that. I wonder if you're drinking too much of your own product. <laughs> Maybe not enough, Peter. You're into slow flow. To have that money in your account three or four weeks ago, genuinely, I'd like to have seen that sold. So for that reason, sadly, I'm out. Peter Jones is unimpressed with the entrepreneur's sluggish approach to selling their stock, and he becomes the first dragon to decline a deal. And it appears Tuka Suleiman thinks the coffee concept will take too long to become a business with big returns. Guys, um, to create a premium coffee takes time. Sure. And, and, it, and it will take you, I would say, years to get to a million pounds. The adaptogens market is set to be worth 19 billion by 2027. You know, we're in a really cool space. Guys, guys, it's all good. But at the end of the day, this is a long journey. I'm only taking journeys that, that I, I can see in front of me. This is one that I can't. So on that basis, I'm not going to invest them out. Zane, Shez. There's a lot of CBD coffee brands out there, right? It's getting really, really competitive. My issue is, and I'm going to be honest with you, is all the other brands I've seen in this space are way better. Yours is so forgettable to me. And I was actually going to turn to Peter and ask him if he remembered the name of the brand. Mm, London. Uh, Zootropics. Zootropics. I mean, that in itself for me is pretty telling. Yeah. The work you're going to have to do is pretty fundamental in transforming this whole proposition, starting from the brand up. Um, and it's probably too much work for me to do on your behalf. So for that reason, I'm out. Stephen Bartlett thinks the entrepreneur's branding needs a pick-me-up all of its own and becomes the third dragon to decide it's not his cup of tea. And his concerns appear to have rubbed off on a previously positive Deborah Meaden. What I feel about the branding, it's worthy, but it's not exciting. There are a lot of people that have entered the marketplace and you, I think, have probably got a point of differentiation. But I'm not sure it's enough. You haven't nailed this yet. So, um... Uh, just, just before... <laughs> just before... <laughs> <laughs> before we just go any further. Before we go any is, further. Is, you know, I really want to tell you about our B2B strategy, because uh, I think there's so much potential for us. You know, on the corporate side, um, we think our blends are perfect for corporate gifting. Stock them in the offices, help your teams find productivity and find their flow. Um, on the hospitality side as well, I think there's so much potential. We think that they're ideal for when you wake up in a hotel. You've got something different. How many times do you go in a hotel and you see the same old coffee there? Well, are you just going to keep talking until I say I I'm going to make you an offer? Absolutely. I like your, I you. like your approach to life. You're good. I'm sorry. I'm out, but you're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, this is our chance, you know. Um, I don't want to ramble on, but I need to tell you the juicy stuff. No, you right? do. 
We're talking to the Department of International Trade at the moment, and they have a contact in um, the Emirates catering team. They think we're perfect for Emirates, and they're happy to introduce us. Um, so, do you know, I love all of that, and that's made me like you even more, but there is a problem with all of that. I hear all of the possibles, but it hasn't dropped into place. Um, oh. So, you know, Deborah, uh, 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 number don't, one... Don't do it. So, don't. <laughs> don't. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, I know enough all about coffee, and I know enough all about adaptogens, but I know there's two cracking entrepreneurs mm. here. So... I'd be willing to take a punt on these two, but I don't have any of the market knowledge and insight to be able to do it on my own. There aren't many people who can stop me saying those two words, but blimey, if anybody can make this work, you guys can. So I'm going to make you an offer, and I'm gonna offer you half of the money and I want 15% for my 25,000. I will also offer you half of the money, 25,000, for 15% of the business. I think you guys might want to go and chat to our rather helpful wall over there. Wise wall. An impassioned plea from the plucky entrepreneurs has resulted in a dramatic change of fortune convincing a dragon on the cusp of desertion, Deborah Meaden, to change her mind and table a joint offer with Sarah Davies. They're both very good. They are bloody brilliant. But at three times the equity they hope to give away... It's going down to 20. Can they now charm their way to a better deal? Yeah? Yeah. All right. So we've, we've spoken to the uh, trusty wall. And the wall has told us uh, to kindly ask you guys if you would come down after 18 months, if you can get your money back, um, to 10% each. And we'd love to do that with you both. Yeah. I want to make you guys proud. You've got a great way with words. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one dragon down. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah. <laughs> Um, see, these things are always counterintuitive to me, but I would meet you halfway. I would be prepared to offer you back the two and a half percent. I'd match that deal. So, um... We'd be delighted to go on this journey with you guys. You know? <laughs> well done. I'm so happy for you guys. That, that's really good. Well excited done. to be in business yeah, with you really too. Excited. Really yeah. excited. Really excited. Really excited. Lovely to meet all of you. It's a privilege. Zane and Shares found their flow to make a remarkable comeback. They leave the den with the £50,000 they were seeking <laughs> and a deal which stunned the dragons as much as the entrepreneurs. What just happened? <laughs> Deborah kind of, I don't know, the way she was talking, I was thinking, Deborah, you're not going to say those two words. Yeah, and, uh, literally said. Couldn't let her say them. <laughs> I think you have invested in two stellar entrepreneurs. Cheers to that. 